Hello and welcome to another C Sharp tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're going to learn something very, 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 very important. Okay, I cannot stress how important this is in making games. This makes your life so much easier. You know how hard it was? Well, it actually wasn't that hard. But you know how we had to copy and paste this thing, change this to one, change this to two. If we want to make another one, oh, sorry. If we want to make another one, we have to copy this, paste it again, make this four, make this four, you know, it's, it's a pain in the butt. So, uh, and what if we have 4,000, what if we have 4,000 zombies in our game, and we all have to keep track of their health? What, what then? Do we have to do this and say, health, health of zombie three is equal to, okay, that's not going to work, right? So there has to be some better way to do this there is that's where loops come in okay the first one I'm gonna show you is the while loop okay uh, so we're just gonna get rid of that actually let's just copy the first one yeah we should get rid of all of them except for the first one we're gonna type in while we're gonna type in two parentheses and two curly braces it's very similar to the if statement very similar except instead of saying if we say while and it's almost identical to the if statement. Uh, it takes a control expression in here too. Uh, so if we put true, if we make a boolean, uh, can loop, and if we set this equal to true, it's gonna work just like an if statement. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna say while oh can I loop? Oh yeah I can. It's gonna do this, and then it's gonna go around and say can I still loop? Yeah I can. It's gonna loop. Can I still loop? Yeah, can I loop? Yeah. So what this is basically going to do is create an infinite loop. And this will probably crash your, yeah, this is not going to work. It's probably going to crash your uh, program. So we want to prevent from using uh, infinite loops. So what we can do, however, is we can make an integer. And we can say count. And it's going to say 0. And we can put, uh, we can say while count is great is less than int array dot length. Okay, uh, arrays have a special property called length, and you can access properties by pressing dot after that variable. And as you can see, we can get this thing called length. This will basically take, this will basically uh, tell us how big this bookshelf or array is. So it's going to return 4 because it can hold 4 integers. So as long as the count is smaller than 4, it's going to loop here. And we're going to say, we're going to put a variable here called count. So what this is basically going to do is it's going to equal 0 first. It's going to say, oh, count is smaller than 4, or the int array length. So it's going to say index, oh, we should change this too index 0 is equal to whatever this in index 0 7 and that's going to and actually we should put a count plus plus oh yeah you guys haven't learned that yet but basically what count plus plus is it's basically saying count plus equals 1 it's just a nice little shortcut count plus plus and count minus minus you can also i think you can also do this plus plus count and minus minus count so uh, that's what you do. So this is going to increment by one every time it loops around, and eventually it's going to be bigger than four, uh, or equal to four, and it's going to exit the loop. So let's run it and see what happens. Yep, it did what we want. It got each index of our array, and now we can make this as long as we want. La da, la 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 la. La 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 la. Okay, look at all those numbers. I don't even know what some of those numbers are. I I don't even know what. See, and we without even typing any new code, without with just entering new numbers into our program, it automatically does all the work for us. Isn't that great? I think it is. Okay, so uh, here I'm going to give you another example of how these would be helpful. Okay, in our example where we had console dot, you know, I'm just gonna write the scenario and then I'm gonna come back. Okay, so uh, I basically recreated the last scenario I 
uh, I created last tutorial with a switch uh, with a switch statement. Or actually, no, I think it was a couple tutorials back. Uh, so just like in the Pokemon game where you get to choose to attack or defend or run, whatever you want to do, or any of those RPGs, uh, right now if we run it, we say I want to attack. It's going to say you attack, and it's going to say end of program, right? But, you know, we know that RPGs don't work like that. We usually take multiple um, multiple attacks. So we're going to add another action called, called uh, quit. And I'm going to call this quit. And it's going to be option four. So what happens, I'm actually, sorry, I'm talking to myself. Okay, so what we're going to do is create a Boolean. We're going to say, want to quit, set it equal to false. And actually, we're going to set it to true. And we're going to set this, want to quit equals true. Now, what we can do is, uh, actually, sorry, we don't even have to do this. Get rid of that. Sorry, I messed up. Uh, you can even get rid of this right here. Yeah, we don't need that uh, for this example. So, I'm going to put while. Uh, while action does not equal quit it's going to basically loop around oh, okay I'm just gonna say this quit so what this basically is gonna do in theory is it's going to loop and do as many moves as you want until you type in the word quit but there's a twist I already typed in are already assigned quit to action. So what this is basically do, so this is not going to do anything. It's going to end before we can do anything. That's where the do while, oh my gosh. That's where the do while loop comes in. So erase this, get rid of that, uh, control X that or whatever you want to do, and type in do. Okay? And at the end here, then we're going to type in while. And we're going to add a semicolon right there. And what this is basically going to do is it's going to not check whatever that is. It's, it's not going to do anything here. It's just going to go ahead and run this without checking anything. And then at the end, it's going to check whether it should continue. If it should continue, it's going to go back and do it again, and do it again, and do it again, and do it again. Otherwise, it's just going to exit. So that's what a dual do while loop is going to do. You see, it didn't end. We can uh, still attack. You attacked. We can still uh, run. You ran. We can still defend. And we can do this as many times as we want until we type in quit. OK? And it's going to quit. So that's basically do while loops. Uh, that's all I'm going to teach in this one tutorial. I uh, hope you learned something. You learned a lot. You learned very important things. You learned loops, which should help you a lot. So. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create something called uh, challenge tutorials or challenge projects. And I challenge you to try to make a calculator using what you've learned now. And in the next tutorials, they're not going to be tutorials. They're going to be uh, how to make a calculator. So if you somehow can't make a calculator or, or if you made, made a calculator and you want to compare it to mine, you can see how uh, I did that. Or if you just want to not make a calculator and not challenge yourself, and you just want to see how to make a calculator with all the things you've learned, then you can just continue on. So, but with the stuff you've learned right now, you should successfully be able to make a calculator. Uh, so, leave a like, rating, rating, subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next